This is the Gendis 2 door interlock, sometimes called an airlock device. It's a small device powered by the controller or lock supply and has a simple switch towards the bottom of the wiring label that selects between normally open, as is typically a lock release, or normally closed, such as a mag lock. Both doors must use the same lock type. These units are expandable, so multiple interlocked doors can be controlled using multiple units. And all Gendis interlock devices carry a five-year warranty. A two-door interlock system requires the user to pass through two doors in sequence to enter or exit the premises, always ensuring the second door is closed. The doors are monitored to ensure that they cannot both be open at the same time. This is known as an interlocked or airlock system and maintains at least one locked door between the inner and the outer environments. Both doors, as in this illustration, can be used as entry or exit doors to and from the inner environment, which could, for example, be a passageway towards another room. In any situation the doors are in, they cannot be opened at the same time. The system follows the sequence, first of all, to request to open a door. The switch on the contact for door one is closed. The system reads the status of door two and understands that it is in the closed position and that will accept the door request and energize the lock out relay. Door one is now accessible. In the recent example, both doors are being opened using a push button. If this is required, then you will either need to add a delay circuit or use a pneumatic push button to provide the door open delay. The interlock will otherwise rely on this being set on an access control unit, uh, such as Paxton Net 2. The two-door interlock can be integrated with an ACU, and in this case a Paxton Net 2. With this as part of the infrastructure, the interlock can send and receive additional functions. In this illustration there is just one interlock, which is still in control of the maglocks, but it's now connected to two Net 2 devices one for each proximity reader per door. The Net2 ACU power can be used provided it has sufficient capacity for the interlock and lock as well as the ACU and its readers. Net2 will determine the access when a token is presented but the interlock will only open the relay provided the two doors are in the correct state. So provided door 2 is closed, when a token is presented to door 1 door 1 will unlock and can be opened. If however door 2 is open, a token presented whether valid or not will not unlock door 1. The same is the case for door 2. If door 1 is closed, we can unlock and open door 2, but if door 1 is open, door 2 will not unlock and cannot be opened. When connecting the interlock device to a pair of Net2 ACUs, you will need to connect the normally open and COM from the interlock to the ACU relay. So if you're using maglocks, don't connect the normally closed and COM from Net2 to the interlock inputs. You should also place two diodes, one across each lock, to protect the relay coil from any reverse electromotive force. A two-door infrastructure requires just one interlock device. If you wish to control more doors, then additional interlocks will be required. In this illustration we have a three-door system which will require three interlock devices and three Net2 boards. Once again, in order for door one to be open, the other two doors will need to be closed. This demonstration shows how four doors can be used and similarly four interlocks and ACUs in this case, Net2s, will need to be connected. So each interlock device will need to be connected to the other door's contacts to ensure they are closed before releasing the lock for each specific door. Taking a closer look at the interlock again, we can see how the device is laid out. And on both door one and door two, it is worth noting that the 12 volt label refers to the connection of 12 volts or 24 volts from the lock, rather than there actually being 12 volts present at that location. In relation to this, you can use a 24 volt lock, but you will need 12 volts for the interlock unit power. At the bottom of the wiring label is the normally open and normally closed slide switch. 
It is important when installing the device to ensure the switch is fully seated at the correct side to your configuration. You may wish to use monitored mag locks and this is not a problem. You will need to connect from a normally closed, normally open or com relay on the mag lock and configure with the interlock as such uh, that the output is closed when the door is closed. At www.gendis.co.uk you can find more information about the interlock such as example data sheets and specific manuals.